good. We're good. Um, well, we know we're good. We're trying to give us affirmation that we already need. <laughs> Do you need affirmation? I mean, always. No. Re come on. Come on. All right. I'll give you some now. No, please don't. Taylor, uh, you're so tall. <laughs> you're so blonde. You're so pretty. Your you is heels high. are so high. Is, your heels is high. Are you one of those girls that's like, I hated my height. It was always awful. And yet, it's turned you into this supermodel actress type. Oh. I, not only am I one of those girls, it's deeply the truth. It was so, I mean, I, I know, I know. But when I was like 12, I was like 5'7", and I was like, I had very short hair and these big glasses, and was like, I don't know how to use my arms, they're too long. How come your people don't love you? Like, didn't your parents teach you how to do it? They were trying. And you were doing no learning. I was doing no learning. Bless their hearts. Bless their hearts. Bless their hearts and my, my monkey arms. I mean, now they're helping me. <laughs> now they're doing a really great job. I'm so happy that I have them. What are some benefits to having monkey arms that the rest of us might not know? I mean, first, faux ballet is very easy for Follet? me. Follet? Yeah, Follet. Follet is something that I excel in, and I can whip out. <laughs> so whip it out. I can whip out in, in, like, in, many, in, in many iterations. I would also like to say, I learned this actually on my show. There's like a great deal of centrifugal force if I want to wind up to hit someone something. You back the f off me. Obviously, you are the face of Orange is the New Black. Sometimes I get sad thinking, wow, we had to do this sort of like glamorous comedy-ish show about prison to really look at the issues, mm -hmm. which are deep. But then again, as long as you're looking at the issues, I guess. Yeah. That's, yeah. Then it doesn't matter how you get there. Yeah, and I think that that's the function that like comedy and, and narrative stories can serve. It's not that they're educating people or trying to push an agenda, but what by helping me relate to someone that I deemed other yes. at one point, that then opens up a whole new world of possibility. And I think that, that that's what Orange has in an in incredible way served to do, where this whole population that we may have thought was like very other and not a had right. nothing to do with us, is now much more relatable. Got it. I wasn't ready. To f Next. OK, so you've made jail relatable, but what about wife swapping in your new film, The Overnight? I think we've reached that point in the evening where we should leave before anything crazy happens. So let's discuss, because I think people are up to all sorts of funkiness. Yeah. And I say hats off. Go for it. Do whatever you want. Yeah. No judgment here. Why are Americans so Uptight? Uptight about this. Why should anybody care? Because we hail from Puritans. We Why well, thought the pure, pilgrims pure were people. doing the nasty? I mean, anyone we who too, procreated... We just lie about it in America. We oh. pretend we're not doing it. And maybe we just needed, we need a, a modicum of honesty around it. If you're uncomfortable, you don't have to do anything you don't want to. Okay. I mean, the thing that I like about the movie is that while it is about people's sex lives, there's also something very kind and sweet at its core. I think there's a real sense of people coming to accept themselves in different ways. There's something very gentle in the midst of the raunch and the rawness. So movie or no movie, since you've become a working actress, what have you learned to accept about yourself in a kind and gentle way? There are different parts to me that I think are quiet or quieter. And, and I'm learning that, that, you know, those parts are also okay. Because you're now really in the public eye, do you find that people don't allow you to just be quiet because they expect you to entertain when you come into a room? There's a little bit more of an expectation of you're arriving and this is who I think you should be. And not even, I mean, I don't know who I am on a day-to-day -day basis. I think that that changes. Because truly, and I'm dealing with this myself, like, I spend so much time worrying about what everyone else thinks. Oh, yeah. Well, therein lies the rub. That's the whole crux of it. Tell me the crux of the biscuit. Give, the crux of the biscuit is caring about what other people think. So, OK, so guess what? Let's say everyone in the world loves you. So what? Yeah, like, exactly. So what do you really get out of it, knowing everyone loves you? Because it's the more. It's the idea, like, I need something more. I need something different. And then I'll be OK. And th what I'm realizing is that, like, that thought process of then I'll be OK is very magical thinking. Very illogical. It does not end up working because that then never makes it okay. Right. It's it's an everyday. It's yeah. an everyday. It's like more of an internal 
Checks Balance. and balances. Yeah. Balance. Don't you think? I think. Like Follet. Yeah. Don't, I haven't forgotten that. Okay. So, so I feel like for it's these heels are a very well, you very can problematic. Well, you feel like we Follet. Okay. So I for I want you, you just kind of need to make sure you have some kick kicks, some kicks and like maybe like a just like what I like to do is just gaze at my arms. And I think your dog really likes yeah, that too. Yeah, she's an owner. Okay. Right. Whoa. I think. Hey. <laughs> I don't know about this whole full lady. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. Definitely I think now sliding you're, now down. You're, now, you're, now, you're, now you're you're on your own. There. I don't think I'm a fan of the fillet. Do you want to dance with us, little puppy? I don't think I'm a fillet fan.